Excel has a secret that it doesn't want anyone to know. And the secret is this, that data validation doesn't stop a user from entering incorrect values. That's pretty shocking. The whole point of data validation is to stop somebody entering invalid data. Now, I'm not talking about malicious activities here. Even simple actions that everyday users perform can circumvent data validation. So in this video, we're looking at why it occurs, but also methods that we can use to fix it. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start by adding data validation to our worksheet, and then we'll look at ways that we can then break that data validation. Here in our example file, we have the area that we want users to complete. For the item column, we only want users to enter the values which are from F5 to F8. So for this, we might create a data validation list. I'll select that range from the data ribbon. I'll then go to data validation. In the allow box, I'll click on there and I will allow a list. And for my source, I'll allow that to be F5 to F8. Then I'll click OK. Now, because this is an area that we want users to enter values into, we need to unlock this range. So I'll select all those cells and I'll press Control 1. That brings up the Format Cells dialog box and we want to unlock those cells. And now let's protect our worksheet. So we'll go to Review, Protect Sheet, and we'll select this so that it only allows us to select unlocked cells. Then I'll click OK. So now, even if I try and click outside of this range, Excel won't let us, but I can select cells inside this range. So our worksheet is now protected. If I click on a cell, we see this icon pop up. If we click on that icon, we can see that list of valid values. So I can select Bravo, for example. I can also enter values directly into the cell. And provided that is a valid option, it allows me to enter that value. But if I try and enter an invalid value, it brings up an error message to say it doesn't match the data validation rules. Now we can add additional messages into here using the data validation dialog box. This is just the default option that we'll use for this example. But here's the thing, it looks like everything's working. That is until we decide that we'll just take the value north, copy it, and then paste it. No error message, no issue. In fact, we can see our values there and north is not one of our values. So just simple copy and paste can break data validation. Not only that, but I could select the cell here, 36, and I can just drag that over the top. Do I want to replace it? OK. And now that cell says 36. Again, I can click on the drop down. 36 is not one of those options, but that value is 36. So we've now entered invalid data in two ways. So what can we do to fix this? Let's go and have a look at some options. The next few methods that we're going to look at don't prevent a user from entering invalid data. Instead, it highlights where that invalid data is. So then we can take action. The easiest method is the circle invalid data option. I'm going to start by unprotecting my worksheet. So from the review ribbon, I'll click unprotect sheet. Then from the data ribbon, I can click on the data validation drop down, so the small button at the bottom. And here we have circle invalid data. This will now circle any cells where the value in that cell does not match the underlying data validation rule. I'll click that and you can see that that 36 has now been highlighted. So I could change that to a valid value. That doesn't make that circle disappear. So therefore what we need to do is to come back to our data validation drop down and click clear validation circles. That makes all those circles disappear. Now this is useful if a user sends a workbook back to us, then we can unprotect our workbook and identify all those invalid values. But it doesn't help a user to see when they have entered an invalid value. So let's take a look at a formula method that achieves that for us. Here in cell E5, I type equals, and we're going to use the count ifs function. So our criteria list is our item list. I'll press F4 to lock that in, and then we want to compare that to cell B5. And we want to check where that is equal to zero. So I'll press enter, and then we will drag that down. You can see it now says false if it matches that list, or true 
if it does not match the list. Unfortunately, this is also picking up blank values. So let's add in another condition. We're going to use and. So we also want to check where cell B5 does not equal blank. We'll close that bracket and press return. And now when we copy that formula down, the only item that says true is 36, because that is our invalid value. So let's wrap this in an if, if, open bracket. So if that's true, we want to display the text invalid value. Or if it's false, we'll enter an empty text string. So copy that down. We can now see that we have an invalid value. Let's just change our font color to red. So that now highlights the fact that 36 is not valid data entry. If we change that back to alpha, you can see that formula now disappears. Next, let's move on and look at a similar method that uses conditional formatting. I'm going to copy my condition check from before, Control C. Then I'm going to select all of the cells. We'll go to home and then select conditional formatting and select new rule. For my new formatting rule dialog box, I'll select the user formula to determine which cells to format and I'll type equals and then paste in my condition check. Then I want to format my cell and let's apply a fill. We'll go for that amber color. I'll click OK and then OK again. And now we have conditional formatting that checks whether this cell matches that condition. If we change that back to alpha, that now displays the correct value. Now for both these methods, we do need to apply that same condition check as we had in our data validation list. So there is a small amount of additional work to make sure that we keep our data validation list and our checks in place so that they are checking exactly the same things. The previous methods that we've looked at provide a retrospective check. It doesn't prevent a user from entering invalid values, but we can identify invalid values. Now, if we turn to VBA, we can actually prevent a user from copying and pasting and also dragging and dropping cells. The problem is that because these are VBA based actions, if a user has to click enable macros, again, these don't give us a 100% guarantee. But let's take a look at these methods because it will definitely help us to provide more security to our data validation. The first method we're looking at prevents a user from using drag and drop. So let's have a look at the VBA code. I'll press Alt and F11, and I've already got the code in this workbook. The key piece of code is application.cell drag and drop. If we set that to false, it means that a user can no longer drag and drop cells. So when we activate our worksheet, and this code is in our worksheet module, so when we activate that worksheet, it will set that property to false. So therefore a user cannot drag and drop. When we deactivate that worksheet, it sets that property to true. So then a user can drag and drop. So let's head back to Excel. I'll click away from my worksheet and then back into it to activate that worksheet. Now, when I click on a cell, if I try and hover over that edge of that cell so I can drag it, it doesn't even give me that option. Now there are some quirks with this. This is an application level setting. So that means it will set drag and drop to false for the entire application. Therefore, we need to be careful about how we handle this property. If somebody closes the workbook while this property is set to false, it means that we haven't deactivated the worksheet. Therefore, a user won't be able to drag and drop until they go in and change that property, if they even know that that property exists. So therefore we need to add some code so that we reapply the drag and drop feature when a user closes the workbook. We also have the issue that if we open this workbook with this worksheet visible, it doesn't activate this worksheet. So therefore it doesn't apply this feature. So that means we need to add two additional pieces of code into our workbook module. So when we close our workbook, we need to set our cell drag and drop to true. And also when we open our workbook, we want to activate our workbook. So we want to run the code that gives the appearance of us activating our worksheet. So that's how we can disable drag and drop. 
Now, before we continue with this video, I want to give you a warning. This sell, drag and drop property is an application level event. That means it sets it for the whole of Excel. If your workbook crashes while you have your worksheet active, it means sell, drag and drop has been disabled for that user. They don't even know that that option has been disabled. So you have to really consider if you want to use this option because you could annoy a lot of users by changing settings that they really need, but they don't even know that those settings exist. Right, back to the video. The second VBA method is to prevent a user from using copy and paste. Let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor. Here we have the code that we want to apply. So this is in the worksheet module and it only runs when a user changes a cell selection. And it changes the application dot cut copy mode to false. Now, while this is an application level setting, it only applies as users interact with the worksheet. So this won't make a permanent change to their Excel application. Let's head back to Excel. So now when I press Control C to copy, we get the marching ants around the cell. But when I click on another cell, it then applies my application dot cut copy mode and sets that to false. So therefore the marching ants have disappeared and it doesn't let me paste. So we can easily disable the copy and paste option for a user. In this video, we've seen how easy it is to break data validation in Excel. All we need to do is copy and paste or drag cells. Now we've seen three methods that we can use to give us retrospective validation. We can't prevent a user from entering invalid values, but we can check whether those cells contain valid values. We then moved on and looked at VBA macros and saw how we could disable the features for copy and paste and also drag and drop. However, this still doesn't give us 100% guarantee because a user still has to enable those macros. And also, do we really want to change an application level setting for a user? Probably not. So does that mean that we shouldn't use data validation? Of course we should. Any form of validation is better than none whatsoever. We just need to be aware that we might have to undertake some retrospective validation ourselves. If you like this video, why not subscribe and also head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training programs. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.